After the Battle of Altvest, General Wallenstein for the Imperialists marched north to Saxony and made a defensive stand. The night before battle, the Imperial soldiers widened the ditch alongside the road, creating a strong, entrenched position. On the Imperial left, Wallenstein had the camp followers raise sheets as battle flags and align in formation like soldiers, thus giving the appearance that his army was larger than it really was. Upon arrival, Bernard of Saxe Weimar advanced to secure Lutzen village. However, the Imperialists had already set Lutzen ablaze to prevent an enemy position. Gustav, relying on his numerical advantage, advanced upon the Imperialists. The left wing of cavalry were ineffectual, as were the infantry against the enemy position. The right, led personally by King Gustav, were successful in their push. Belatedly joining the battle, a counterattack was made by the infamous Black Cuirassiers under General Poppenheim. The Swedish right reeled back, and when Gustav attempted to rally his men, in the fog and in the smoke, the king was shot by a stray bullet and slain on the battlefield. The fighting lulled, giving chance for word of Gustav's fate to reach the battle hardened Swede. Singing Martin Luther's hymn, Ein Festburg, the men marched forward in defiant patriotism. On November 16th, the Swede again fought for God, King, and Country. Gustav is remembered as a leading figure in a transformative time in Western history, but has Gustav's celebrity as hero for Protestantism superseded his true character? Before the Swedes landed on the mouth of the Oder in Germany, Gustav attacked the port cities of Poland. This would create a vital defensive buffer if perhaps the Swedish army was not in Sweden. Gustav began his attack on Poland shortly after an international influence began to involve themselves in the German conflict. This far-sighted thinking was beyond the opportunists who were appearing at this time and was on par only with the French at this point. Another matter that can be weighed as an expose to the character of the Swedish king was Gustav's romantic life. For political reasons, Gustav married the sister of the Brandenburg prince elector, Mary Eleanor. However, it's documented that the young Gustav had a deep romantic relationship with Countess Ebba von Bray, a regular guest at the Swedish court. This relationship offers us a glimpse into an unbridled passion, perhaps Gustav's only unbridled passion, cut short by the methodology that Gustav is most remembered for. There is little speculation that Gustav's unimaginative strategy of a full frontal attack at Lutzen was due to being exhausted from the stalemate at Alt Vest. However, there can be quite a bit more speculation into Gustav's noticeable decline of strategic acumen that followed after Queen Mary Eleanor's visit the previous winter. To what degree did Gustav's duty as Swedish ruler differ from his own personal desires? Is it possible that it was to such an extent that Gustav's unfulfilled passion affected his military judgment? 